Thriving through change. That's what we're here for tonight. So how do we do it? It was just the other day I overheard a grandfather talking to his grandson. And the grandfather says to his grandson, when I was young, when I was a little boy, I could go to the corner shop with 50 cents and I could buy a packet of chips, a loaf of bread, a can of soda and eggs for mum and come home. And, and the little boy looks up and he goes, Pop, Pop, what can you buy now? And, and he says to his grandson, not much really, there's too many security cameras. <laughs> Lots has changed in, in the past, in the present, in the future. Things are only going to change and that's one guarantee in life. Things will change. So how do we deal with it? So I'm going to talk tonight about riding the wave through change. Have we got any surfers with us tonight? Now, if you've surfed for very long, you'll know at certain times you can get smashed by waves. And that's what can happen when we are in a new season. So how do we ride the wave so we don't get smashed by it? So we're going to talk about what is change, what's the difference between change and transition, why is the transition process so important, we're going to deal with that and then at the end of this you'll have a clear understanding of the difference between change being situational and transition being psychological. You'll be more equipped to make that transition when new seasons come and you'll be able to teach your children and support them through change cycles. So the dictionary defines change as to cause to be different. It's quite a simple way of explaining change. Something changes because it becomes different. But I'd like to explain change in a bit more detail. And it comes from a model that William Bridges has has formed and it's, it's from the book called Managing Transitions, Making the Most of Change. And he talks about change being situational. So it happens at one point in time. So you might have a new role, you might go to a new work site, someone might retire within your workplace or it could be that you've got a child going from year six to year seven. That can be a really big change. But it happens at one point in time. Whereas the transition process, on the other hand, is psychological. So it has to do with our thoughts and our feelings. And that doesn't happen just like that. As soon as a change happens, we, don't necessarily have, we haven't necessarily caught up psychologically. And there's a three-part three process to this, and it's an internal journey. And I'm going to talk about it now. So this is a model to help you understand the transition model. So the first thing that happens when we're in a new environment is we have to say goodbye to something. Now sometimes change is good. You might get a new role at work, you might be going to high school and you're really excited or something good might have happened or sometimes change isn't something you chose. But whether it is, whether it's good or not so good, it's still, you still have to say goodbye to something. So there's an ending phase. And you can feel a bit lost, you can be angry, you can be grieving. That's all part of that ending phase. And then there's a letting go. And once you let go, then you en enter what's called the neutral zone. And that's that kind of place where you're not really sure how to do the new things, but the old things don't work in the new situation. So you've got to re-navigate. It's a time where you can have a lot of creativity, which is really helpful, but there's also a time where you can have a lot of anxiety because everything's so new. And then eventually you go through the cycle and end up with a new beginning. And that's all we're, where we want to be. We just want to be in the new beginning, but we have to start at the beginning of the process. Now, have a show of hands. Did everyone go to high school here? Can everyone remember which high school you went to? <laughs> Vaguely. <laughs> now, I went to Galston High School and it was a massive school. Now, I didn't go to high school alone because I just happened to have a twin brother. So, I went off to high school with my twin brother, which helped a little bit, probably not a lot, but it did help a little bit. So, the day I went to high school, 
that's when the change happened. I was no longer in primary school. Whether I liked it or not, I was then in high school. But the psychological transition took some time. Can everyone remember their primary school that they went to? Yeah, you can remember that. Do you remember being the oldest in the grade in year six and then going to year seven? And guess what? You were the little person again. I remember that quite vividly. So there was a loss in that. You're no longer the person that knew where everything was. You're the person that had no idea where everything was. And there can be a grieving process. And for different children, it can take longer. It just depends. Some kids transition really quickly into high school and for others, it takes some time and that's okay. And then there's the neutral zone. Does anyone remember their high school library? Yeah? I remember walking into my high school library. It was so big and I had no idea where to find anything. In fact, the whole school was big. Everything was new. And so I was in this transition period where I didn't know where anything was and I had to learn. And then eventually, there was a new beginning. Being at high school wasn't so bad. You've made the transition process and there was a new beginning. So what happens if you don't make that psychological transition? Well, what happens is you can get stuck. If you look at that photograph there, that happens to be my driveway. And it doesn't really give it justice. If you actually drive up my driveway, you end up on about an angle like that and you're kind of sitting back in your chair. And so for the first month of being at Avoca Beach, instead of Bensville, I, used, I came from a very flat driveway I was quite happy about, to this. So for the first month, I refused point blank to drive up that driveway. I would not, I'd walk up it, I'd walk up the stairs for a whole month. I was too scared to go up or down that driveway. If you look at the telegraph poles, which pretty much they are, they're the piers of the house. So I was very well aware if I moved one way, I could hit a pier of the house. If I veered off too far, I could actually fall off. What you can't see there is there's a drop. You can actually fall off the driveway. Not sure how the car would end up. So after about a month of being complete denial and not even starting the transition process, I decided that I didn't want to be a 70-year-old woman walking up my driveway, particularly that one. So I summoned some courage and I got Andy to give me a few pointers on how to do this and I went down the driveway. I didn't fall off, I didn't hit anything, but was I scared? Absolutely. And I thought it's only gonna take me one or two goes. I was in the neutral zone for about one month until I felt comfortable going down that driveway. And that's what can happen when we're in a change environment, in a new season, it can take some time till you feel comfortable in that new environment. And if you don't, embrace the transition cycle, you can definitely get stuck because there is no new beginning. I could still be walking up and down my driveway. Now Andy actually says, can you slow down? And yeah, because otherwise the bottom of the car scrapes. So now I need to learn how to slow down. 